So welcome to the second lecture dealing with solid state structures. We said a solid was a 3D array. And crystallographically, it means it's a 3D array of unit cells. That is repeating patterns. That is a piece that can create the whole structure by simply translation up, down, right, left, back, and forward. So let's look at a simple cell. We have three possibilities for simple packing. We have the simple cube. We have the body-centered cube, where the, each of the ones at the corner, and there is one in the center of this cubic structure. And finally, we have the face-centered cube, where on each of the square faces, there is one directly in the center, but nothing in the actual center of the structure. The second characteristic of the solid, besides being a three-dimensional array, we said it was closest packed. So what do we mean by closest packed? How effectively packed in are the spheres in our nice, simple cube? So that is what our simple cube would look like if we were doing simple cubic closest packing. It's a bit hard to visualize what's going on because of the spheres, so we'll reduce them somewhat in size. So we've reduced the size of the spheres so that you can see more clearly what's going on. Now the thing you have to keep in mind is that the unit cell is actually only where the bars are. The spheres are not actually in the unit cell. Only one-eighth of each of those spheres is actually within the unit cell itself. So you have to keep that in mind. The unit cell is where the bars are. Everything that's not encompassed by the bars is actually outside the unit cell. So how closely packed are the spheres in a simple cubic structure? Well, the volume of the unit cell, remember it's only the volume occupied by the actual bars in that previous diagram, is simply 2r. The length of each of the edges is 2r. And so the volume is simply 2r cubed, or 8r cubed. And how much of each of those atoms is in that sphere, is in that cube? Well, each of the spheres is 1 eighth into the cube. 8 times 1 eighth is 1. So there is a volume equal to one sphere inside our simple cube. And what's the volume of a sphere? Well, straightforwardly, it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 8 r cubed is 0.52359 da 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 da. In other words, the simple cube is only about 52% actually filled space. And almost 48% of it is simply empty space. And that certainly doesn't sound like very efficient packing. And the fact is, it's not. If rather than lining up the spheres into squares, we offset the top two slightly to the right, we end up with a more efficient packing. The height of the, the square was 2r. The height of the diamond we now have is only 1.73. And so the diamond has a much lower area than the square does, but it still contains one whole circle's worth of area. And so the triangles are much more efficient packing. Bringing the spheres together in a square is clearly not the most efficient way to bring them together. They're obviously packed tighter if they are packed into triangles. And so it is triangular packing rather than square packing that is the most efficient. It's more effective to bring the spheres together in triangles. If we extend it to the plane, that means each central sphere gets surrounded by six other spheres, and that's as closely as we can pack them in. And so we get layers of spheres all packed together in a basically a hexagon arrangement. In the same way, in two dimensions, it is inefficient to stack the spheres, one directly above the other, in the different layers as we move up. 
it is better to offset the layers slightly so that they go into the spaces between the other triangles. And so we see the second layer sitting down on a triangle of the three underneath it. And each of the spheres in this row is in fact put down into a triangle on the ones beneath it. Where it gets interesting is when we put the third group up on top. Because now we end up having a choice. When we bring the third layer in, we could simply put it over so that the atoms line up with the atoms in the first row. And then in this case, we get an AB, AB pattern. An AB, AB pattern is what is known as hexagonal closest packing. And it's one of the most efficient forms of packing. The alternative is to bring the third layer in so that it is not over the first layer atom, so that the atoms are offset. And in this case, we get an ABC, ABC, ABC pattern to the structure. And that is what is known as cubic closest packing. There's a significant difference between the two structures. In the hexagonal closest pass structure, some of the holes never end up getting covered. That is, the holes extend all the way throughout the whole structure. They are emptied space. Whereas in the cubic closest pack structure, there never goes more than two layers before a hole gets blocked. And so the holes, the open spaces, do not extend throughout the whole structure. It's fairly obvious where the hexagonal closest packing gets its name from. Each of the spheres is surrounded by six in layers. They're obviously giving you a hexagonal shape. And so consequently, it's not surprising, it's hexagonal closest packing. But where do you get cubic closest packing from? Well, in this case, what we have, of course, is one in the top of a, of a set of six atoms, the next layer underneath it, the th third layer underneath it is offset, and then when we get to the fourth layer, it's in exactly the same place as the top one was. And so that's the arrangement in our ABC pattern. Well, if we set that down and look at it, what we see is, we have a set of four with one in the middle. We have a set of four with one in the middle. We have a set of four with one in the middle, which looks just like this. A square with five, one in the middle, a square with one in the middle, a square with one in the middle. And that, of course, was simple our face-centered cubic structure. So in fact, the ABC pattern, ABC pattern produces a face-centered cube structure. So how efficient are the hexagonal closest packed and the cubic closest packed? Well, we can do the calculation for the cubic closest packed fairly easily. The hexagonal, of course, is packed just as efficiently, although it's a more interesting calculation. We can do the calculation for the efficient packing in the face-centered cube. The hexagonal closest packed will be, of course, the same. In this case, the diagonal on the face is 4r. That means that the edge is 2 square root of 2r in length, so the volume is 2 square root of 2r cubed. Meanwhile, each of the corners has 1 eighth of a sphere in it. And each of the faces, there are six faces, has one half of a sphere in it. So there are four spheres in our unit cell. Cell 4 times 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 2 square root of 2 r cubed gives us 0 0.74048, etc. So in other words, both the hexagonal and the, clo and the cubic closest packed are about 74% efficient, much better than the 52% of the simple cube. So the hexagonal closest packed and the cubic closest packed are as efficient as you can pack spheres together. Not quite as good, 
would be the body-centered cubic. We said the body-centered fills up that big hole in the center of the simple cube, but it does force the edges further apart. And as a result, the body-centered cube is only about 68% efficient. Way better than the 52% of the simple cube, but still not quite up to the standards of the hexagonal or the cubic closest packing. And that brings us to the end of our lecture today.